Hello and welcome to the Snap Revise YouTube channel. My name's Amy and for today's video we're going to have a look at the exam technique. What kind of things you can be doing when you're actually sitting down with your exam paper to maximise the marks that you can get. Your exam technique is something that I think a lot of students fail to take account for when revising because you assume that you just need to know the course content and obviously you do need to know your course content but your exam is a whole activity that you need to prepare for and feel confident in when you walk into that exam hall. If you have a, a plan for how you're going to approach the questions then hopefully we will minimise some of that exam stress and get you answering the questions fully and achieving every single mark that you possibly can and that's how you're going to get those higher grades. So practicing your exam technique is pretty key. The one thing that kind of goes without saying is before you get into your exam you have to know the course content, you need to revise. No amount of exam tips, hacks, tricks are going to get you those grades if you don't know the course content going in. A great way of understanding your course content and consolidating your revision is by doing past paper questions. This is beneficial for two reasons. One, you build in active recall into your revision and that's something that we will bang on about until the end of time and it's something that you will find will massively benefit you when it comes to the exam because you've been there, you've done all of that active recall, you've done the past paper questions going into the exam is nothing new for you. And the benefit that follows from having the benefit of knowing what you're doing in the exam is getting to be familiar with mark schemes and what the exam board looks for depending on the type of question that they are asking you. So by doing past paper questions, you start to realize exactly what different types of questions are looking for and keywords that you can involve in your answer that help the examiner give you that mark. Not too long ago, Snap Revise actually ran an exam webinar, which you can see just up here if you follow this pop-up. In this webinar, the Snap Revise tutors went into an insane level of detail, researching exam style questions and giving you the information that you need to be able to identify those questions and then answer them. I honestly cannot recommend this video enough. It will be so beneficial to you, so please do go give that a watch and then you can couple that knowledge with the tips in this video to help you be an A-star student when it comes to your exams in the summer. The next piece of advice for when you're in the exam builds on something that comes up quite a lot in the exam question webinar, which is read the full question, RTFQ. This is so, so vital because some questions actually ask you for two levels of response in a kind of, not a sneaky way, but you could miss it if you read the first part of the question and started answering based on that first bit of the question. I think what you need to ask yourself before answering any exam question is, are you 1000% sure and clear on what the question is asking for? There's not much more to this tip. Just read the full question. In scientific exam papers, you have to show a level of mathematical competency. So there will be some sort of question that asks you to calculate something based on information that they provide. Make sure that when you are answering these questions, you are checking decimal places, significant figures in your answer. So even if you give the correct value, if it's not written in the way that the question is asked for, they cannot give you the mark um, or the full marks anyway. Go through each stage of your working out and make sure you've not made any simple mathematical errors like adding something up wrong or dividing something when you should have timed it. Those kinds of really simple mistakes can affect the later equations that you do and can affect a whole load of marks. So make sure that you are always, always, always checking your working out. The next bit of advice is going to address timekeeping. Now, keeping track of time in an exam is what makes the exam stressful because you know that there's only a limited time to answer all these questions and check your answers and make sure that you've satisfied everything that you need to. And it's the challenging part of exams, it's what separates exams from coursework. So we need to make sure that we develop a kind of approach to keeping track of time beforehand. And to be honest, the best way of doing this is again by doing past paper questions. If you can do a full past paper in the time that you would have in an exam, and if you do this regularly, this kind of takes away the stress of going into an exam hall because you're not going in to do something completely new, you've done it before. So it's just sitting down and repeating what you've done before in your revision. However, when you are in your actual exam, there are some things you can do, I'm sure you'll be relieved to hear, that can help minimize the stress related to how much time you have left. So when the exam begins and you're allowed to open your paper, I'd recommend that you skim through 
through each of the pages and double check that firstly you know where all the questions are. Um, it's quite nice to know when you've got a big essay exam answer coming up to sort of get yourself ready for it, I don't know, mentally you need to prepare. But also it helps you to identify where the easy marks are so that you can go through and fill in the one mark questions because those are the easy marks. If you can get through those then you can spend a little bit more time on the longer questions. I will definitely recommend when it comes to the longer questions that you take about five minutes to plan a response. It seems counterintuitive to take five minutes out of your finite time to do your exam just to plan a response because you want to be answering questions in all of the time you have available but trust me this technique will stop you from wasting time writing things that you don't need to write about. What you want to do is have a clear plan, a clear formula for how you're going to answer that question, exactly what you're going to say at each stage, and then you can write it out in full. This is something that comes up in examiner reports saying that students end up contradicting themselves because you kind of write your response and then you continue to write and you start writing things that don't match up with your actual response. And even though you've got the right answer in there, because you've put something later on that goes against what you said originally, you will lose the mark. So refining your approach to answering those longer questions can be done by sorting out a simple plan. Finally, I'm going to recommend that you have a look at how many marks are available in the paper and how much time you have to do the paper. This way you can work out a kind of marks per minute rate that you need to be working at or marks per five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever works better for you. Because this way you can track your progress as the exam goes on. You will know whether you are lagging behind a little bit or whether you will have some spare time at the end to go over all of your questions. I would recommend that when you do that sort of mini calculation to look at the marks per minute that you should be doing, that you actually build in time at the end where you're not trying to gain marks, but you're actually checking what you've written so far. It is so important to check your answers. So building this time in is, to be honest, essential. I think you need to make sure that you're building in checking time. To close out this video, um, I want to end with a tip that isn't exactly exam technique, but it is something that you definitely need to work on, and that is your handwriting. If you find that others often find it difficult to read your handwriting, then you might want to consider getting some practice in so that when it comes to the exam, all of your responses are beautifully clear and well presented because there's nothing worse. It honestly is so devastating to think of people that have written the correct answer but didn't get the mark just because the examiner can't read what you've written. Make sure that you've written in full clear sentences. If you've crossed anything out, I would advise against writing above the line so you know when you've crossed out the word and then you try and fit in uh, the other answer above the crossing out, don't do that. If you need to ask for some more paper, then do that. It's so, so important that what you have written is easy to read. Hopefully those tips will help you out when it comes to preparing for your exams in the summer, although I'm pretty sure that mock exams will probably be first. Uh, whatever exam you have, hopefully these will help you out. If this video was useful for you, if you learned something, then please do give us a like and comment down below if you have any other questions or ideas that could help everybody else with their exam technique. Please do consider subscribing to Snap Revise just here. We have loads and loads of A-level content that will help you with your revision. And if you want to find out a bit more about Snap Revise and who we are and what we do, then this video here should answer all of your questions. Good luck with your revision and I look forward to seeing you again on the channel soon.